excited I forgot my rabbit is. Oh, get to talk about science and how the world works and it's Easter Sunday! We're gonna play Does It Lay Eggs? And I'm gonna tell you about the little Easter egg hunt that we're going to do. Um, I've got some questions about eggs that you might think you know, but maybe you don't know. We're gonna look at where eggs come from. Maybe you've got eggs with you, in which case you could study that egg. If you haven't, I've got an egg here which I'm very pleased with. So, does it lay eggs? And the first person to shout the right answer wins. If you're on your own, see if you can get eight. Does it lay eggs? Seagull! Yes! All birds lay eggs. Cat! No! Cats don't lay eggs. Cats are mammals, they've got fur, they give milk to their babies. Mammals don't lay eggs, do they? Does it lay eggs? Goldfish. Yes, it does. Most fish lay eggs. Frog. Yes or no? It's actually both. Six species of frog that we know of give birth to live young. Frogs usually lay little frog spawn and the tadpole grows inside the sort of jelly egg and then they wiggle out. But no, one type of frog, the Indonesian fanged frog, gives birth to teeny little tadpoles. The Suriname sea toad gives birth to fully formed frogs through its back. Yeah, uh, in the YouTube version of this I will put a link to a video because it's it's disturbing. Does it lay eggs? Just shout yes or no, first one wins. It's turtle! Yes, all turtles lay eggs. That we know of. Tuna! Yeah, sharks. Do they lay eggs? Well it is a fish. But it, it doesn't lay eggs. It gives birth to teeny tiny little baby sharks. <sighs> Biology, I'm telling you. Right, does it lay eggs? Duck. Yes, birds lay eggs. Well then, it's a crocodile. Yes, all crocodiles that we know of lay eggs. Lizard. Does a lizard lay eggs? Again, it's yes and no. 20% of lizards and snakes give birth to live young. The yellow-bellied three-toed skink in Australia, the ones that live high up where it's really cold, it's very difficult to keep eggs warm, they give birth to live young, but the yellow-bellied three-toed skinks that are low down, they lay eggs because it's warmer down there and it's the same species. <laughs> Does it lay eggs? Duck build the bladder buzz. I'll show you again in case you want to change your mind. Does it lay eggs? Duckbill platypus. Yeah, it does. The duckbill platypus does lay eggs. Thank you so much to Hoglitz Theatre um, for this book, which is serving my purposes perfectly because it's got an echidna in it as well. The duckbill platypus and the echidna are the only mammals, furry things that give milk to their babies, that also lay eggs. The echidna, um, it lays its eggs into a little pouch and then in 10 days they hatch and then it gives them milk. I mean, it's Cut out the middleman, echidna. It's cute though. I have got a game for you. There are six eggs with letters on them hidden around this show. If you can spot all six, you will be able to spell a word. Eggs are weird. Should you keep eggs in the fridge? Should you keep eggs in the fridge? Can I just have a quick vote and whatever the comments most agree with, I'll write that down. Natalie, mostly. No, says Georgia. Not necessarily. We keep eggs in the fridge even though you shouldn't. It's all that's sort of. Well, I'm going to have to write yes and no. You just wanted to see me write a lot backwards, didn't you? Do you know how difficult it is to write Y's backwards? Um, we'll get back to that. Uh, next question. There's only two more. What's the difference between a chicken and a hen? The third question that we will answer at the end is what does colour of eggshell tell you about egg? I thought this was going to be fun today, um, but actually there's a... Uh, it's been a terrible crime. We were really excited because we uh, we had this box of Easter cakes all ready to be eaten this morning. And when we woke up this morning, um, the box was empty. Look at it, it's been decimated. Um, and the, the only evidence on the scene of the crime was this thin-shelled, rich-yoked uh, brown egg. Um, now, I called the police, obviously, and the police, uh, well, they scoured the area and they sent me a list, they've narrowed it down to, um, to four hens that were in the area at the time. Here they are, uh, Margot, Eva, Joe and Beatrice, who left the thin-shelled, rich-yoked brown egg at the scene of the crime, all my cakes eaten. Um, which chicken committed the crime? By the end of this show, you should know enough to tell me.
You're gonna have to learn about chicken eggs, aren't you? Let's do this. First question then, the aim of the day. Where do eggs come from? Where did this egg come from? Think about it carefully for five seconds. Exercise your brain. That's right, an egg box. But before that, that's right, a shop. But before that, where do eggs come from before the shop? That's right, they come from a farm. But before the farm, yes, obviously, they come from a chicken. But before that, if you uh, come to my weekly science lesson, you will know that we usually do a story time where we look at a famous scientist and a discovery that they made. Today we're not doing a story time. Today we are going to journey into a chicken's bottom. Come with me. The chicken's egg takes 24 hours to make its way all the way down this tube, this overduct. It's all curled up inside the chicken, but this is not far off how long this tube actually is. Our journey starts up here. These female chickens are born with about 2,000 teeny little baby yolks uh, called oocytes. The liver takes all the delicious nutrients from their food out of their bloodstream and, and turns that into yolk. And then the liver sends the yolk over to the ovary and the yolk starts building up in layers on these tiny little oocytes. Um, so if you ever overcook a dippy egg, don't be upset, cut it open and see if you can see those layers. And when the yolk is really big, um, it actually bursts out of a follicle along a special slit that doesn't have any blood vessels on it. Um, if there is a blood vessel crossing the slit, then when the yolk comes out, it might get a little spot of blood on it. So if you've ever seen a little spot of blood on your yolk, it's totally harmless and that's how that happens. Um, the yolk travels into the infundibulum and if the hen has been anywhere near a cockerel this is where the egg will be fertilized now your eggs at home almost certainly have not been fertilized but um but don't worry your eggs probably wouldn't grow into chicks oh, if two yolks pop out um at the same time that's a double yolker and this uh, is where there might be some salmonella bacteria lurking which is how salmonella bacteria get into the egg before it gets its shell on uh, and that can cause some serious harm don't ever eat raw egg but you don't really want to touch raw egg you have to wash your hands i don't need to miss any of this um so adults if you could now crack an egg if you've got one onto a plate keep the shell for a second i'm going to ask you to wash one of them but not both of them. If you haven't got an egg, you can look at mine. In fact, I'll show it to you now. If you have got an egg, have a little look inside the shell. And you should find that one half of the shell has got a weird little bubble in it like that. Don't wash that one because I don't want you to damage the bubble. Can you just put that upwards on the plate so that you can see it? Um, but then wash the other shell so that people can have a little play with that one. Right, let's have a look at yolks then. All living things are made out of cells. Cells have a nucleus, which is where the DNA is stored. The DNA decides what the chicken's going to be like, how big it is, what colour its earlobes are. Yes, you heard me right, chickens have earlobes. In fact, interesting fact about chicken earlobes, um, they're a rough indication of what colour egg the chicken is going to lay. So, for example, um, here, these earlobes on these chickens are red, um, but this chicken has got white earlobes, so that chicken would lay white eggs, and these chickens would probably lay uh, brown eggs. Right, back to our yolk. The DNA of the egg is kept in the germane disc. It's a lot bigger in fertilised eggs, but there it is, look. Clear as day. The nutrients that the chicken eats go into this yolk. A chicken that's free range and has been pecking around outside with lots of insects and stuff, that will have a very rich golden yolk. This is a stunner, isn't it? And hens kept in cages will probably be much paler, but this is where it all gets political. It's illegal to dye egg yolks, but it's not illegal to feed chickens stuff that can colour their egg yolk, like marigolds or paprika, that can change the colour of the yolk. So the best thing to do, I'm not going to get too political, the best thing to do is, uh, is buy local. Me now takes us to the delicious sounding um, magnum, where the yolk gets its white. Um, and what's very cool about the magnum is that you, the yolk is spinning round and round and round the whole way through this process. Now the yolk is covered with these uh, protein fibres and the fact that it's spinning and the fact that it's covered with these protein fibres produces something which you might have seen but that you've probably, to be honest, um, sort of avoided thinking about because it looks totally gross. 
it's not it's not not my best work i'll just show you what's happening egg yolk um protein fibers when the yolk spins around the yolk gets these little pigtails i'll just i'll just show you on the egg what, what i'm getting at these weird stringy bits here at the side these have you ever wondered what they are well they are these little pigtails not great with the pronunciation i think they're called kalazi if you want to I just started calling them Khaleesi because of Game of Thrones. Totally harmless. They're just little strings of protein which have been spun around as the egg spun. And they're actually incredibly useful. You've ever wondered why the yolk isn't sat at the bottom of your egg or off to one side? Those little pigtails um, keep the yolk suspended in the middle of the white. So there you go. Egg white is just really useful. It, it acts like a shock absorber. Um, it just protects the egg. But it's also full of loads of gorgeous proteins. About 90% water, about 10% proteins. One of them is conal bum in which makes iron stick really tightly together because the iron is kept really close together it means the little chick inside the egg has loads of iron but bacteria can't get to the iron and use it and so the chick avoids infection it's just it's easy to think about to describe chickens as like egg factories but this is a living thing that over thousands and thousands of years has just slowly slowly adapted and changed until we have just these incredible complicated processes so get your eggshell that's clean if you've got one and i'll show you this one again you'll know that this exists but you might not have ever thought about it when you crack the eggshell um and sort of peel you you will have seen this before won't you that you get this lovely white membrane like that not one membrane but two are put on in the isthmus why is that I've given you a teeny tiny clue with something that i've showed you it's a lovely fact we'll get to that later um Right, one last place to look at, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna do the experiment that is not on the internet that I've never seen before. You might be the first people to ever witness this experiment. Um, the shell gland, it does what it says on the tin. The egg sits in the shell gland for 20 hours in this really um, heavy concentration of calcium carbonate solution. Calcite crystals form on it and grow and grow and grow and grow and lock together and form this solid shell. Um, is it solid? Yes, but it's also full of pores because just like us, chicks need to breathe. So it's just got enough teeny tiny holes in it that oxygen can, it can get in for the chick and carbon dioxide can get out. Now, it's experiment time. I'm so excited. Thousands of years ago, chickens would lay about 20 eggs a year. And then humans took the chickens that laid the most eggs and let them have babies and then took the babies that laid the most eggs and let them make babies and then uh, carried on carried on carried on until we sort of produced this chicken that lays 300 eggs a year but it is extremely hard work for the chicken um, and i eat a lot of eggs so i work chickens very hard anyway i didn't want to work them really hard and then just use an egg to like plop into a bottle or soak it in vinegar or something so instead what i've done is i've gone to my compost and I've found all the eggshells I can possibly find and I've ground them up into a powder. And I'm going to pour them into this milk bottle. And then I'm going to add some vinegar. Eggshell, calcium carbon eight. That is chemistry's way of telling you that there's calcium in it, there's carbon in it, and the eight means there's also some oxygen in it. Now, when I add the vinegar, all the particles that make up the eggshell, the calcium carbonate, and they're going to move around and sort of swap places and a gas called carbon dioxide is going to be released. Now to catch that, I'm going to put this balloon on top. So let's see what happens. I can't find this on the internet. There's a lot of what to do with eggs. There's not a lot of uh, what to do with eggshells. So I'm just going to pour in the vinegar and then as fast as possible, I'm going to put the balloon on top. You ready? Don't let the gas escape. There. Oh, look at that. Just going to take the bottom in case the power of this experiment is such that the balloon pops off. If you come to my science lessons every week, we talk a lot about how the world is made of particles. Everything sort of comes back to that. They're all fizzing around in this bottle, rearranging themselves into a gas called carbon dioxide. I'll give it a shake. Aston, A7, I didn't know this much about eggs. Well, I should think not. I didn't know this much about eggs either, Aston, and, until about a week ago. Then I give that a good shake. I've um, made the eggshells really, really, really fine so that they've got a big surface area so that they all get covered by the bit. Look at that! Wow! 
is that white vinegar or just regular vinegar? Um, this is, what's this? Just distilled vinegar. I think any vinegar would be all right. I wouldn't use anything too expensive. Look at that. So very clearly, I'll show you, look at all that fizzing. Look at all those amazing bubbles on the top there. That's just eggshell and vinegar. It's delicious, isn't it? This is gonna make me an, an internet sensation. I'll leave that there and we'll see how big it gets. Because that's not the end of the eggs journey. The shell is then coated with something called the cuticle, which again, it still allows the gas to travel through the shell, but it doesn't allow any bacteria in. It's just brilliant. And you would think that that would be the end of the journey, but it's not. Oh, my pee is the wrong way around. Yeah, that is a pee. I asked you why there were two membranes. When the egg is in the hen, it's quite warm. Um, and when it comes out, it cools down. And like a lot of things, when it cools down, it shrinks. Now, as the egg inside the shell shrinks, one of the membranes clings to the shell and one of the membranes travels with the egg. So the membranes stretch apart and create an air pocket, this little bubble that we saw here in this egg. Um, what is that little bubble for? That little bubble is so when the chick decides that it's time to crack out of the egg, they can peck that bubble first, take a big gulp of air, which gives them the energy to get out of the egg. So there you go, what you're looking at there is if this had been a fertilised egg, that would be a chick's first breath. Isn't that beautiful? Now that is the end. So what we need to do now is we need to, we need to crack the case. Older hens tend to lay thinner shells and young hens have very thick eggshells. Let's go over and see if you crack the case and then I'll give you some awesome egg facts and then we'll go through the answers to the questions. So I woke up this morning, someone had eaten all the Easter cakes, our kids were distraught. Who committed this heinous crime? There was a thin shelled, rich yolked brown egg at the scene of the crime. Was it Margot? Was it Eva? Was it Joe? Or was it Beatrice? You might have spotted that it wasn't Eva because she's got white earlobes, which means she probably lays white eggs. Um, you might have spotted that it was a very rich yolk. Now, Joe lives in a barn, so it probably wasn't Joe because she won't, she'll have a more limited diet. Beatrice and Margot live in fields, so they're pecking around outside. So they both produce very rich yolks, um, but it had a thin shell. Yes, well done. That's right. The older chicken lays the thinnest shell. So look at that shifty face. It was Beatrice. I will be hunting her down. Right. Answers to the questions. Should eggs be kept in the fridge? Oh, I could do a whole incredibly tedious show on this. It's really interesting. The answer is yes and no. Well done. You all got it right. So salmonella can get into an egg uh, right up there in the infundibulum. But it can also get in, you might have noticed in my diagram here, um, the chicken's poo comes through the same bit as the egg does. So it can also uh, get, get onto the outside of the egg through the poo. Now in America, they tend to do battery farming. They don't tend to do free range. There's an awful lot of poo around. The eggs get covered in poo. It's a big salmonella risk. The American government deal with this by washing the eggs with basically uh, disinfectant. Um, but this gets rid of the cuticle which protects the egg from bacteria so in an American supermarket you will find the eggs in the fridge um, because they're sort of too delicate and too at risk of other bacteria, so they've got to be in the fridge. The British government, well they knew about the, the shrinking thing, so if you spray your disinfectant onto the egg and get it wet and the disinfectant is too warm then when the egg cools down again it could actually draw more bacteria through the pores of the shell and into the egg, which is dangerous. And imagine if you had a homework machine that would always get you a C on your homework, would always get you totally average homework. Over time, you would probably not bother to do your homework because you'd just rely on the machine. You'd be like, ah, a C will do. The British government said that they would worry that farming standards would slip because people would start thinking, oh, it's all right, they'll just get washed at the end anyway. And that is why you can keep British eggs uh, outside because they don't have any disinfectant on them. <sighs> you thought that was just going to be like yes or no, didn't you? What's the difference between a chicken and a hen? A lot of you got that, well done. The chicken is the species, so all of them are chickens, but the cockerel is the male chicken and the hen is the female chicken. And the last question, what effect does the colour of the egg 
have on the egg. None at all. Again, it's all down to the chicken's DNA. It's kind of painted on right at the last second, but it doesn't make a difference to how nutritious the egg is, and it doesn't make a difference to what the egg tastes like. So don't worry about spending loads and loads and loads of money on blue eggs. Um, right. Oh, I was going to give you more egg facts. These are cool. So did you know that if you put all the chickens in the world on a scale, they would weigh more than every other bird in the entire world. They found fossilised dinosaur eggs inside a fossilised dinosaur, which they're saying is proof that birds did evolve from dinosaurs, because birds are weird. They've only got one ovary. Most animals that lay eggs have two ovaries, and dinosaurs had two ovaries, but it looked like they were only releasing one egg at a time. So they said the dinosaur looked like it was a cross between a crocodile and a bird. And within the last couple of years, scientists have developed chickens which lay eggs that contain drugs for treating arthritis and some cancers. And it's a hundred times cheaper to get these drugs from a chicken that has laid them than it is producing them any other way. I saw some crying faces there, yeah. Um, the scientist in charge of the experiment said that the chickens were really pampered and looked after very well compared to like farm chickens and that as far as the chickens were concerned they were just laying another egg. Um, that's something for you guys to debate in your homes if yeah, maybe you've got an opinion on that. Right, that is all my egg facts. I'm gonna go and eat a load of chocolate. It is so helpful when people like my Facebook page and subscribe to my YouTube channel so if you've enjoyed this uh, please do that. Thank you so much for joining me. I've had a really lovely time. But the balloon is massive. Right, enough procrastinating. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody, and have a very, very happy Easter. Oh, uh.